They say it takes a village to raise a child because children need a lot of different people to look out for them. Families can use all the help they can get. After all, no parent is perfect. That's why McCoy leads the Early Intervention and Prevention Initiative. We want to showcase all of the excellent programs in our city that help families learn and grow together. Because when we learn and grow together, we make our village a better place to live. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoy this episode of Our Kids, Our Families, Our Communities. Hi, you're watching Our Kids, Our Families, Our Communities. My name is Mitzi Wilson. I'm the Early Intervention and Prevention Initiative Director at McCoy. And this is a show to provide information and resources to families in our community to help our youth thrive and grow. Today's topic is on youth sports. And so to begin, I'd like to introduce you to our guest. We have Christopher Edison. He's head football coach at, coach at the Charles A. Tinley School. As well as we have Tanisha Neely. She's founder of Resilient Yoga. And so to really just get our conversation started today, I would just like to um, turn it over to the both of you to give a brief introduction about who you are and the organization that you're with. So we can begin with you, Chris. Uh, well, first off, Mitzi, thanks for having me. I uh, appreciate all that you're doing. Um, like you said, I'm the uh, head varsity football coach over at Charles A. Tinley, um, also the uh, middle school head football coach. Been coaching for about six years now, and football is my love. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Tanisha Neely, and I am a yogi. So I've been practicing uh, yoga since I was 11. Um, and I have four kids, um, 24. My oldest son is 24 now. I can't believe that. Um, 20, 16, and 17. And they're all athletes. Every last one of them are athletes. And so uh, this is a topic that's very uh, close to me. Thank you for being here. Um, just to kind of get into a little bit more of your backgrounds, Chris, I know that um, for you, um, you know, this isn't kind of, you're not new um, to the sport of football, that that's been an interest of yours. So mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit about that and what motivated you to become a football coach? Uh, well, you know, like I said, I've been coaching for about six years now. Um, I played at Warren Central, uh, graduated in 06. You know, those were the glory days. Mm -hmm. um, and what got me into coaching, I mean, it's, you know, when you have a strong passion for something, sometimes you don't choose it, it chooses you. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's, that's what I tend to say for as far as football goes. Um, football is only a tool for me uh, to continue to mentor uh, these young inner city kids and, um, and steer them in the right direction. So that's my spiel there. And Tanisha, you have a you know a personal connection as well that you spoke to. Mm -hmm. um, so you know why has it been important for you, or how have you been engaged with your children um, as they've been athletes? Oh my goodness! Well, I'm um, soccer mom, basketball mom, football mom. Um, of course, if you ask my daughter, soccer is the real football. <laughs> okay. We won't argue about that today. <laughs> we won't argue about that today. But I've got two soccer players. And uh, she's a bee. She's a beast on the field. I love them. Um, when it comes to um, injury prevention, um, I've been supporting them. They've been playing sports since they were very, very young. Um, they've all been on the field, I think, since the age of four or five. And um, I've watched them grow as athletes. I've watched them um, uh, develop both physically and mentally. Uh, it helps them both on and off the field, so I am a supporter of sports. Um, however, my concern is how much pressure we're putting on young bodies mm -hmm. and maybe even on young minds too. And I, as, as I've watched um, my kids play, um, both of my daughters who've played soccer have dealt with concussion issues. Mm -hmm. Um, Abby's pretty strong. Cheyenne had some issues with her knee. Um, my daughter, who plays basketball now, still plays basketball for Lawrence, uh, tore her ACL and her meniscus. Same knee, uh, less than a year prior. Okay. 
um, and my son actually got an injury while he was playing, not on the field, this was actually off the field, but he actually got a cut on the back of his heel that kind of went into um, one of the ligaments that helps your foot flex. Mm -hmm. And so it, what seemed to be a minor injury actually changed the way he was able to run. Mm -hmm. He wasn't able to run as fast as that foot wasn't flexing. Mm -hmm. So I've watched them all um, struggle in some way or another with being on the field and, and keeping healthy. Mm -hmm. um, also there's the stress, of the mental stress of being on the field. Um, I think that what we're capable of doing with our bodies is very different than being in a high stakes game and you know you're like wait the, this last this is on me mm -hmm. you know win or lose this is on me sometimes that can be um, really stressful on young minds and so um, I became interested in how I can use yoga to help with mm -hmm. injury prevention um, when it comes to uh, both the physical body and also the mental capacity to endure something mm -hmm. stressful. Thank so. you. Mm -hmm. And you've really kind of, um, you know, touched on some, you know, good points. One of the, you know, focuses of this show is really around, you know, prevention with youth. Yeah. And as much as, you know, and we'll get into it a little bit later, we can talk about all the benefits of youth sports. Um, mm -hmm. We do want to make sure that um, our viewers, you know, whether youth or caregivers, um, you know, know about injury prevention, but also just how to keep them health, themselves healthy um, as they're playing sports. Um, so, you know, Chris, as a coach, what are some of the things that you do um, to really help, you know, make sure that kids are safe on the field sure. um, and that they, you know, that they keep the lens towards injury prevention? Sure. Well, uh, initially, uh, we teach the fundamentals. Um, we teach the fundamentals from the si sixth grade up into uh, senior, senior in uh, high school. Uh, so we are at the ground level as far as form tackling, as far as even how to run. Uh, we actually reteach all the fundamentals um, to help them uh, prosper within football. Um, also, we try to reach out to the parents to, um, you know, set up meetings as far as you know, letting them know what they're getting themselves into. Uh, we can't promise it'll be injury free because we all know football is a, <laughs> it's a dirty game. Uh, but we do promise that we will teach fundamentals. Um, we will, uh, you know, keep an eye out on any injuries that you know kids may have and um, monitor that with the athletic trainer and things of that sort so uh, we put a good put a good cap on the injury prones and things of that sort Thank you. Mm -hmm. and you know as a parent Tanisha you know, really injury prevention is something clearly that that you've been mindful of mm -hmm. um, what kind of tips would you give to a parent or get caregiver about how at home they can help reinforce Mm -hmm. um, you know, what a coach might be telling them around injury prevention. Yes. So um, I know that regardless of what sport your child plays, um, keeping a healthy body is important. And so we know hydration, we know um, eating well, we know sleeping well. All of those things um, are very, very important. Um, as a yoga teacher, I um, one of my concerns with young bodies is that um, we spend a lot of time building them up, building their strength, uh, their muscle capacity. And then when it comes to stretching, you know, I've watched them stretch and, and they'll kind of, you know, <laughs> half do it. Oh, <laughs> you know, um, I love yoga because instead of teaching them to stretch, we're teaching them a practice that can stay with them a lifetime. Mm -hmm. um, it's a meditative, I guess you could call it a mini sport in and of itself. Mm -hmm. And so I think that when young people have something like a practice versus just go stretch, but more of a practice that they're doing to keep their body fluid, um, I think that they're more likely to do it and to do it properly, take the time to breathe, go ahead, you know, and mm -hmm. stay there and actually do the stretches. Um, the yoga postures that I like to teach for athletes are actually the opposite of strength 
uh, training because they get so much strength training from the uh, trainers. I already know that. Mm -hmm. My daughter comes home, quads aching. <laughs> she, I've maxed out today. But then she's crying because they're, they're so tight. Mm -hmm. So then what do we do? We usually do a short, I do a short practice with her and I'll say, this is the pose you need to do. I need you to stay here. I need you to breathe. Um, I need you to remember to do this on the field before um, you go or before you uh, max out. Mm -hmm. You need to have stretched well so that your um, body doesn't lock up on you. I think that um, training typically focuses on the muscle development and not so much of keeping the, um, the ligaments and joints healthy. So when I, I watch sports like totally different, I love football, I love basketball, but when I see, I, I just went to Mississippi watched um, one of my cousins take a real nasty fall right on her knees. So I'm always watching ankles, knees, uh, hip flexors, elbows, shoulders, you know, of course, neck and, and head injuries. But those are some of the ones that I'm looking at. And so helping them to strengthen the actual ligaments as opposed to just packing on muscle. I've seen some big guys break. Mm -hmm. I always tell them, bricks break. Yeah. <laughs> bricks break. Yeah. No flexibility means that you're going to break. So we want to strengthen. So that. something that um, parents can really, or caregivers can really hone in on is mm -hmm. really the, the overall health of their, of their yeah. youth athlete. Mm -hmm. um, understanding the, the need for stretching and that, mm -hmm. you know, the joints and the ligaments that they have, you know, yeah. as a young person will continue on mm -hmm. as an adult. And to actually yeah. supervise mm -hmm. it in some way you know, instead of leaving it to them because they will, they, they don't quite respect <laughs> until, until, you know, something mm -hmm. happens or there's an injury. Right. So teaching them about how their whole, whole body works. And I, I love, the, like I said, I love the practice of yoga because it teaches them how their whole body works. So it teaches them body mechanics. Mm -hmm. Um, it also teaches them body awareness. Where is the hurt? Where, if your quads are tight, do you even know what that is? Um, do you know how to, to undo that and remedy it? So we're giving them tools and skills that, that they can use. Also, I think uh, breathing and yoga breathing is very important. Um, breath capacity on the field. We know that if you can breathe, really well you don't get as tired as your yeah. opponent sure. so um, I teach a lot of that but also when they're on the field and they're making sudden moves the game is going it's a very fast-paced game all of these games and so how do we teach young people to slow down their mind see the field see what's going on so that they don't actually have some of the injuries can be prevented by yeah. just being aware so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And that's really kind of, you know, a, a helpful component of the conversation to really, you know, highlight and make sure that, you know, people are, are focused on injury prevention, mm -hmm. um, you know, but the, also the, the flip side of the, of the coin as well um, is really um, we, most youth know about, you know, sports and different activities in their communities, um, but we're finding that youth still aren't engaging, whether that's because of, you know, technology, um, you did mention kind of the, the competition sometimes that's um, intimidating or a barrier for mm -hmm. youth. Um, so kind of what are things that you do to kind of, um, you know, promote um, youth sports in the community? <coughs> Excuse me. Well, at the ground level, at, uh, at the middle school level over at uh, Charles A. Tinley, um, I pretty much, you know, build a brand. Um, I talk to all my coaches. I talk to the parents. Um, I honestly look at that as far as going to the basement, building up the house, because if you are not, um, you know, gaining kids at the, you know, middle school level, then when you get to the high school level, you know, the interest of the sport, uh, the interest of the brand, the school, you know, the prestige isn't there. Uh, so I think it's vital and it's very important to get uh, from the sixth grade up, even at the sixth grade level. We had sixth grade, uh, sixth graders on the team this year. Um, that it's so important because it's they they're going to build your brand one day. They're going to be at the high school level one day. So, I uh, you know I start off over there at the middle school and then I build it all the way up. So that's that's my process currently. Uh, it's been working. We get we got a nice outcome currently with the eighth graders transitioning into high school currently. That we have uh, 
about 11 eighth graders, and that's pretty big for Charles A. Tinley. Uh -huh. We only have about four or 500 in the high school. So, you know, just getting 11 guys there currently for the off-season workouts and uh, teaching them the program, and you know, that's, that's been huge for us currently. So going to the basement, building up the house. So what would you say, um, you know, to that parent or youth that, you know, wants to engage in a sport or some physical activity and they're trying to discover what it is? Well, I would, you know, first ask them, you know, you know, what is your, what is your child like? You know, what is your, what is your kid like? You know, if, you're, if they like to run, um, if they don't like physical activity, then maybe football isn't for them. Mm -hmm. um, if, if they have a heart, then maybe they can come over and play football. You know, maybe they can push, put everything to the side and, you know, lift some weights and, you know, become tough. That's what I like to preach on. Um, uh, but, you know, football isn't for everybody. Uh, football is a dirty sport, uh, so I don't try to, you know, pull teeth in that regard. I try to, um, once they come in, I match them up size for size, grade mm -hmm. for grade. Uh, so we're not doing anything, you know, out of the norm. So they can match up to the skill level mm -hmm. uh, that's in front of them. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. And so, Tanisha, you mentioned that um, your kids as well have been athletes. I'm uh, an old school eight. mom. I take them outside. <laughs> no. So you don't get to sit at you. You just don't. You don't get to sit in the house Give me that and tablet. watch TV. <laughs> Give me that tablet. <laughs> yes, I got a godson who's seven now, and I'm like. Give me that tablet. He just wants to fiddle. I said, uh, uh, hand it over. Here's a soccer ball. Here's a baseball. Get outside. So one, I think getting get them moving at a young age and help them understand that being sedentary is all day is in my house is not acceptable. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. I, it's not even that it's not encouraged. It's not acceptable. So um, getting them outside or getting them moving, and I think you can kind of see how they're how how they um, or what their skills are or where their passions lie through um, experimenting. It's really interesting that I have four kids now with my godson five. He's actually interested in baseball. So I have two daughters who gear towards soccer. That's their thing. One daughter, basketball, that's her thing. Mike played uh, football. That was his thing. Um, they, I think all of them also have, um, because they started out moving. Mm -hmm. So I think the, the key word for me is move first. <laughs> Start them out <laughs> moving. Just, mm -hmm. just make them move. Um, see if they can run. See if they can kick a ball. See if they have good eye-hand coordination. Do they like to throw? Do they like, you know, and then you can start to match them, match them with that sport that fits them. Sure. Because I, my basketball player, I tried her out in soccer, and I remember her sitting and picking the grass. She was like, um, <laughs> I know I'm not doing that. And vice versa, if I tried to have my soccer player play basketball, she's like, mm. <laughs> No, not not for me. So giving them chance to explore, but I think first is move. Okay. You have to be moving. Um, so as a parent, I think the reason why they were so interested in sports, and they've all done other things besides their primary sport. So on their off season, um, two of my soccer players, no, all three of them ran track. The only one that didn't was Zion. They lift weights. Uh, Abby tried shock put, <laughs> so they 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 also uh, have more confidence to actually try another mm -hmm. sport that's not even their their dominant one. But I think that comes from um, raising them to move. Yeah. yeah, thank you. They must move. And also, you know, kind of let's talk about just those you know mental health benefits. You mentioned you know confidence. Um, you know, in working with young people, how have you seen them develop and grow? Um, from being student athletes? Well, first, the, you know, the relationship that I have, you know, developed with, you know, all my previous players, even when I was over at Short Ridge, um, you know, they all come full circle. You know, I continue to talk to them. Uh, Coach, I need some groceries. You know, I'm sending grocery money down to college. Uh, so just, you know, b building those relationships uh, first for me is, is vital. Um, and then from that, like I said, football is it's just a tool for me. You know, it's you know I don't I don't see anybody coming out of Charles A. Tinley going to the NFL or anything like that. So, you know, I'm here to you know help mentor the inner city kids. 
uh, and you know, with that, uh, I exude confidence in them um, on a daily basis. You know, uh, just I monitor every progression as far as weightlifting, as far as speed development, um, grades, uh, first and foremost, because it's student athlete. But uh, yes, I, I do all of that. I monitor every progression, and like I said, I exude all confidence in them because you know I want to be that image for them that I didn't have, you know, coming up. So. Um, it's important uh, that you know I continue to monitor all the progressions, uh, continue to have the development and the um, relationship with the parents, uh, so we can you know build young young men up in society. So, it's thank you. Mm -hmm. And we have a couple minutes left, but it, Tanisha, how have you seen you know your children grow, um, really, just from a mental health standpoint, um, from being athletes or? Oh yeah, from a, from a mental health standpoint, they have a lot more endurance. Hmm. Um, sports can be, like I said, stressful and high stakes. Um, all of them, with it, yeah, all of them have played um, not only for their school, but they've also been on travel leagues um, and played some very high stakes games, and that can be stressful. Um, especially when they're trying to make appropriate decisions on on the field mm -hmm. and I've seen them uh, grow mentally to the point where they're able to actually make those hard decisions on the field where they're able to accept the outcome of the field including losing um, without being a sore loser <laughs> okay that's important to to me um, being competitive um, is one thing, and I, I'm very competitive, my children are very competitive, um, but there's a spirit in which you compete, mm -hmm. which means that sometimes you uh, lose, even when you play fair. Playing fair is another mm -hmm. um, thing as far as mental health goes, that hey, there are rules to this. Um, we're not on this field to harm anyone. Now, we are here to win, but <laughs> we're not here to harm anyone. Um, yeah, and, and, and just keeping their, their awareness. I think that's the big, the big thing, mm -hmm. keeping their awareness so that they make the appropriate decisions on and off the field has probably been uh, the biggest thing uh, with sports and that they take away, especially in, in a team sport because they have to care about their teammate. Mm -hmm. um, it teaches them that they can't win alone. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can't do it by yourself. That's life on and off the field. So there's so much that they take off off, off the field um, from, from sports. And so um, when I introduce them to yoga, I think that they also take that off the mat. Mm -hmm. You know, the ability to breathe, whether you're on the field and you're in a high stress situation or whether it's because you're angry and you're ready to fight because somebody just called you a name and you're like, wait a minute, I need to get myself together. How do I, how do, I do that? So they can be aware that they need to do that, but giving them, as you say, tools. Mm -hmm. Breath to me is a tool. I need you breathing, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. I need you to focus on what's important. If you make this mistake, you don't, you cost yourself, you could cost your team. Um, I know Abby, them red cards, man, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so getting them to make appropriate decisions. Mm -hmm. Mental health wise, I think that it, it's just a wonderful thing that keeps them busy, definitely, and uh, out of trouble. Yes, <laughs> busy definitely. and out of trouble. Yeah. Kids have a lot of energy, so I am, I believe in the old adage that uh, idle hands are the devil's playground, mm -hmm. and so I need them moving, and I need them doing something. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, you both have really just shared, a, you know, a lot of um, great information with regards to youth sports. I know that's a very broad topic and conversation, mm -hmm. but something that we definitely want to highlight in these summer months, making sure that our youth are active, um, but while they're active, making sure that they're safe. Um, and that the, you know, the parents and caregivers understand that it's, you know, and as much as it's the physical activity, that there's also that, um, you know, personal benefit that comes really, you mm -hmm. know, improving um, their confidence as well as some other character-based skill sets. Mm -hmm. um, so I just want to thank you both for um, being on the show. Thank you. Um, I want to, you know, provide the opportunity if there, um, you know, is 
resources or information that you would like families to have, a way to either um, connect to you through Tinley, um, as well as to learn more about Resilient Yoga. So um, if you want to share how they can connect to Charles A. Tinley School. Uh, well, they could um, contact the school directly. Mm -hmm. um, the school is located off 38th and the Meadows. Um, they can contact me um, via Twitter at Coach Edison. That's Edison, like Thomas Edison, E-D-I-S-O-N. And also <laughs> Coach Edison on Instagram. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. And Resilient Yoga is um, a community-based programs that we do in schools, churches. Um, we connect with schools as well. Um, any place there are people, we can bring mats and we do yeah. yoga. So, um, Resilient Yoga, you can find us at resilientyogaindy.org. Uh, that's our website. The, we also have a Facebook page. So, Facebook at Resilient Yoga Indy. And you can see um, a list of all of the events and programs that we offer if you're interested in bringing something to your um, facility or to your own mm -hmm. program. then. Um, just hit me up on either one of those pages. Can I have a free session? A quad? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know what? I will do that. Oh, if, you, if you ever want me to come and work with y'all and the kids, okay. I will do that. <laughs> you, you said my quad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it gets some. Yeah. No. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for your time thank today and really you. for your passion for the youth in our community. Um, that ends our show for today with regards to youth sports. Um, if you would like to um, find additional information about McCoy, um, you can visit our website at mccouth.org. Um, you can also connect into our Facebook page by either going to Facebook and searching Marion County Commission on Youth or McCoy. Um, there'll be a YouTube um, video of this show posted as well. So thank you for watching.